To wrap up this section, we're gonna compare NumPy's efficiency against pure Pythons. And we're gonna understand a little bit more why NumPy was so important to kickstart the data science ecosystem in the Python programming language. So the first comparison is just the size of the objects and numbers. I told you that NumPy uses primitive numbers, right? Like floats and integers that are implemented in machine code and they are not uh, as Pythons, they are not boxed, right? Remember Python integers or, or floats or any number, they are boxed integers. That is because they have this surrounding uh, layer of just the pure object of a Python uh, of Python. In this case, if we compare the size of a regular integer in Python, this is a pure Python number one, right? You would expect that this how much could take eight bytes, four bytes, two bytes, eight bytes, let's say. It's a, it's a very generous number. And still, it takes 28 bytes to store such a simple a number. Remember, that is because this simple naive number is not just an integer, it is also a pure, a, a fully functioning Python object. It has a bunch of methods, attributes, uh, the whole information regarding the object inside, so it does take a lot of space in memory. If we have a very large number in Python, in this case, it takes 72 bytes. In NumPy, a regular integer, in this case, the default one, which is usually in this platform, num, um, integer 64, we see that it takes only eight bytes. So the same integer takes 28 bytes in pure Python and it takes only eight bytes in NumPy. Also, NumPy will let you create your own uh, or define a little bit more granularity in your number. So in this case, we can, for example, use a, Num a NumPy integer that takes only eight bits or just one byte. That is, of course, a really small range of possible numbers. In this case, with only eight bits or one byte, we can store a number from zero up to 255. But if that is your case, for example, you're storing some categorical data in which the values are, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, right? Like for example, answers of a survey, this is a very well-suited object or, or type, and it takes again only one byte, very efficient. By default in NumPy, actually depending the platform, you're gonna get a default type, which is the default np.int is usually integer 64, that is eight bytes, 64 bits, or integer 32, which is, uh, that is a, a four byte integer. If we create uh, these arrays, we will also be kind of uh, keeping up a little bit of, uh, of, of the space, we will be saving that space. We always have to keep in mind that the numbers will be trimmed if we exceed right the possible range, the, the range of possible values of that type. So again, we saw that an integer eight can take numbers from zero to 255, to 255 sorry. If we create one from zero to 256, right, we, we will be overflowing that default type and we're gonna get a zero back, right? We're overflowing that uh, range of values. So, so far, that is the difference between memory utilization and the memory uh, that it takes a pure Python object, a lot of memory because it's a it's an integer, it's a boxed integer or a box float, and the amount of memory that a NumPy number takes. Let's compare really quickly the efficiency of multiple operations. To start, we're gonna create a very simple array that has one million elements, a fairly small array, I'm gonna say, with uh, random integers from the range from one up to 9.99. So the operation that we will be performing and comparing in pure Python and NumPy is this one. We will be summing the squares of the numbers. We're first squaring the array and then we are performing the total sum of it. And this is the result. How much time does it take in a pure Python uh, version? In this case, we're doing a less comprehension first to get the squares and then we are doing the sum in the, this is the regular built-in sum function of Python. It takes, in this case, 215 milliseconds or just 258, depending how you wanna uh, measure it. In this case, it's CPU time or wall time. It's the same thing. What we wanna compare is the ratio, right? Or the proportion of time that NumPy takes versus Python. 
this is again the pure Python version. The NumPy version will take, I'm going to show you, just in this case it took 52.4 milliseconds. This is probably going to get sped up when it's cached. As you can see, it's now a lot faster. It does have some variability, but what you're saying is that it's significantly faster. Okay. Sometimes even 10, 100 times faster than the regular Python uh, version of the same operation. Again, this is the pure Python version, less comprehension, built in Python syntactic sugar for a map operation and a sum built-in Python function compared to the NumPy version. Of course, the result is the same in both. Finally, what does it all mean when we're working with code? Well, it means that NumPy will try to be as efficient as possible, and sometimes that includes some limitations, all right? So, for example, we know already that we, we create an array, NumPy will assign a type to it. So, when it assigns a type, and it knows how many elements that array is going to have, it's going to allocate memory in a continuous manner. It will just allocate, uh, it will find a chunk of memory, which is free and can contain, right, which is large enough and free to contain your newly created array. So all your numbers, you can be sure in NumPy, they will be sitting in memory one next, one next to the other. So any of these operations will be very fast. The result of these operations, just something that can be done with really low level primitives. So again, this amount of memory is all uh, reserved contiguous and NumPy is also taking into account how many bytes each one of these uh, numbers gonna take. In this case, we have three objects and each one of them takes eight bytes, right? So it will need three times eight number of bytes in memory. It will find a chunk of memory, which is free and has at least 24 bytes. In there, it's gonna place your array. So it needs to know, again, how many elements you have and it also needs to know what type they are. And once that memory is reserved, we can't change it. Right? So, for example, if we try to store a float, which takes a different amount of memory, what we will see is that NumPy will just um, trim it. It will just trim all the decimal part. It's going to run it to a regular integer 64 integer. Right? So, then another implication is that sometimes you are going to find errors. If we want to transform all the array into floats and add a decimal base quantity, we're going to get an error. And it's going to tell you that the memory basically is already allocated considering an integer 64. And now you're trying to use a float for this operation and that cannot be done. I'm going to give you a challenge now. We've had a couple of videos of NumPy. We have explored it in detail. And now I'm going to ask you, how can you concatenate a new or how can you append a new number into a numpy array do you remember what is the method or what's the way you will be concatenating or appending a new element to a numpy and already created numpy array the answer is that that is not possible or at least it's not simple to do it and we haven't seen seen it either it's because numpy again is assigning contiguous places uh, chunks of memory for each one of the arrays. So we don't have this notion of appending things at the end. That is more of a Pythonic way of thinking about lists. In this case, with NumPy, we're always creating new arrays and transforming them into new things, right? So if I do something like array plus 10, this is a new array that is was created before the, the previous array it's still there sitting in that original memory position. So when we run this operation, what NumPy is doing is first getting the original type that is going to be here. Of course, calculating what's going to be the resulting type. Let's do a float here. I can do plus 0.5. And then finding that amount of memory that it's going to be needed to store this array with these number of elements and this type. Once we can, once it can find that memory, it's going to allocate this new array 
the previous one is always sitting here. So that is the answer. It's not simple. And actually, you shouldn't be appending things con continuously into a NumPy array. If you have that situation, when you, you need to add either at the end or at the beginning of, an, of a sequential structure, you just need to use a regular Python list. NumPy arrays are used to get them all loaded into memory and do processing with them.